So VLAB 1 of week 3, or if you're following along in the lab book, lab 5, managing group policies within the Microsoft Windows environment. I'm already at my VLAB login page. Here are the instructions on how to follow them. When you're ready, click Start Assessment. Pay attention to the deliverables so that you know what you have to turn in. That's a really big thing here is make sure to know what you have to turn in. Just in case you need the instructions again, they're right there. When you're ready to begin, go ahead and hit Access VLAB. This will use Java, so you may get uh, a or two Java pop-ups. Just go ahead and allow them to run. I'm using Chrome because it allows it to work a little bit better. Uh, the prepping lab environment, it can take anywhere between a few minutes and 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this loads. Okay, so like normal, we're going to go ahead and RDP to one of our servers. So let's go ahead and open up our RDP. Let's go ahead and navigate over our Windows target VM. Close any of the pop-ups that you get. And from there, let's go ahead and load our server manager. Server manager normally is the icon right next to the start button when dealing with server. And it does take a second or two to, to load up, so be patient. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and navigate to Tools. Uh, in a real-life environment, you would actually be loading up all the roles. You'd be able to see them all from here. Some of them may be red, some of them may be yellow, some of them may be green. Normally, you'd want to double-check all of these to see what's going on with the health of the individual roles and the servers. Just general uh, info for later. Okay, so go ahead and click on Tools. We're going to be opening up our Group Policy Management. This is actually one of the big reasons why we use Server, is so that we can centralize policies like this. Go ahead and expand out our forest and our domain and you should be able to see our domain now securelabsondemand.com so from there what we're going to do is we're going to expand out all of our domains so we can click on our default domain go and click OK to accept it and there is our basic default domain policy I'm going to move my window over a little bit. All policies or GPOs, group policy objects, are actually stored underneath our group policy object OU. And what we do is we just create links to our domain. So we can put them wherever we want within our structure. That way you have a centralized, these are where all the policies are at, and then you just drag them wherever you need them to go. So we're going to go ahead and be uh, editing our default policy. So we're going to right click on it, edit it, <coughs> and we actually want to be looking at our accounts policy on our computer side. So we're going to go policies, windows settings, security settings. account policies and here they are so the, normally the question I get asked the most is how do you know where all the policies are at like how do you know what policies to do I have three Microsoft text just on group policies and there are so many policies out there that you can do it just kind of depends on what are you trying to do what are the best practices for your field no one is going to know all the policies, don't get me wrong, but you have to be able to figure out where to find the policies that you do want. There's numerous resources within uh, TechNet or Microsoft's website for you to find how to do just about anything. Because if you can manage it on a computer, you can manage it through a group policy. It's just you have to find out 
how. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at our password policy and we actually want to be looking at all of the different items that are here. So first thing is we have to figure out what each of the policies do. So I'm actually just going to open up one. The lab environment sometimes kind of slow. Sorry about that. My lab for the tad bit. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to look at our enforced password history and we're going to be looking at the explanation. And this just gives a general explanation of what that policy does. And we actually want to do that for all of them. Our labs today are running kind of slow. And again, we just want to get a general explanation of what each of these policies are doing. I'm not going to go through each one of them. You guys can do that. But these are all of our account policies. From there, let's go ahead and navigate down to our local policies. Again, go ahead and expand out each one of these and let's look at a few. Uh, one specific one that I use a lot is this shut down the system policy and this just prevents people from being able to shut down their computer. But I mean a big thing here is you look through them to find what uh, policies are here. What policies could you be using? You want to be able to map these to the written policies for your organization. Things like restrict CD-ROM access, restrict USB access. You can do so much with GPO. It just kind of depends on what your policies are. So go ahead and look through all of our local policies. Go ahead and look through all of our account policies. Now when you're done with that, let's go ahead and look through our event logs policies. Here we can, again, push out a policy for our event logs. Go ahead and look through each one of these so that we have a general idea of what they do. Like how large do they have to be? How uh, small can they be? Can they be sent somewhere else? You can do a lot through a GPO. It just kind of depends on what you're wanting to do. So once you look through our account, local, and event policy, let's go ahead and go back up to our account policies. And let's go ahead and go back to our password policy. Let's say eight characters is no longer good enough. We want to make it 10. Just edit it to 10. Make sure it's defined. Now everyone where this password, or where this policy is applied, their password has all new passwords. That's important. Not all current passwords, but all new passwords have to be 10 characters or more. They will not be retroactive, which means if you already have a password, this may not apply to you until the next time you have to renew your password. Then this will. From here, let's go ahead and look at our account policies. Because we have our account lockout policies, we also have our local policies. So let's go ahead and notice that they're not defined. That means that currently there's nothing there. We can actually define them and then set a criteria. You want to look through the explanation so we have a general idea of what they're doing. You want to spend some time looking through Active Directory so that you can get a general gist of what policies are there. So that should be good enough for now. Uh, again, you want to look through as many as the lab does require. What happens if you want to audit the report? So you actually want to be able to drill down to see what's really there. So let's go ahead and double click, or not double click, but let's right click on our default domain policy and let's click on save report. This should generate a report file. It does take a second, so you have to be a little patient. We actually want to save it to this computer. We want to put it on not C drive of our RDP session, but C drive on. We want to put it on users. It should be administrative. Administrator, sorry. Desktop. And save it as 
your name. Keep you port. Make sure to save it as an HTML file. Click on save. And if all was done correctly, there it is on our first desktop, not in our RDP session. What happens if we don't want to do it through the GUI? What happens if we want to do it from our command line? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of all of my windows, so I'm back at my RDP desktop. Go ahead and open up a command prompt, a administrator command prompt preferably, and we actually want to type in gp result forward slash h and where do we actually want to have the output saved to? Let's go ahead and save it to administrator. Make sure you're doing the spelling correct so it doesn't just generate some whole bro bunch of brand new uh, folders. Student underscore dot html double check the uh, spelling of everything oh. and I totally missed the word users administrator desktop and it should be generating oh it did not like that path whatsoever let's try that again Double again, pay attention to the spelling users, administrator, desktop, students. Oh, I forgot an additional I. You have to make sure that you spell them correctly. <laughs> and there is our output from our command prompt. And this will actually give you a breakdown of all the policies, changed, anything uh, that's been modified will all be here. So let's go ahead and navigate to where we made our change, which for us, we were looking at computer, we were looking at our security settings, we changed our password length to uh, 10. These are the uh, GPOs that they were modified. And that's actually really it for all of our auditing. Make sure to copy uh, that to your computer so that you have all of it. But that's managing uh, group policies within uh, the EMS environment in a nutshell. Don't limit yourself within the policies to just this so. A big part of this is play with it figure out what policies are there, what you can do with them, because there is so much power here, you just have to know how to use them. Well, I want to thank you guys and hope you guys have a great day.